Well, it was bound to happen. Manga now dominates the American comic book industry. For years, American comic book professionals have denied that there is a major issue within the industry, namely a dwindling audience. Comic book professionals will cite statistics from outlets like ICB2 that show increasing financial returns and claim that this proves that the industry is actually growing. What the pros tend to leave out is that the number of units sold aren't often tracked and the prices for comics have drastically increased over the years, with the average issue sitting at now 4 or $5. The price increase allows companies to bring in record profits while selling fewer books. The same thing applies to trades or graphic novels. However, due to the pandemic, how the industry distributes comics changed, with the biggest shift being DC Comics ditching Diamond Distributor. This shift resulted in a new way of tracking comics, and as ICV2 reports, the numbers are huge. Quote, Sales of comics and graphic novels grew over 60% in 2021, according to a new joint estimate by ICV2's Milton Grip and Comic Cron's John Jackson Miller. Total comic and graphic novel sales to consumers in the U.S. and Canada were approximately $2.075 billion, a 62% increase over sales in 2020, and up over 70% from sales in 2019, the last pre-pandemic year. Publishers made more selling comic content than in any year in the history of the business, even when adjusted for inflation, said Miller of 2021's estimates. The biggest year in the modern era, 1993, saw sales around $1.6 billion in 2021 dollars, and the price year product mix puts 2021 ahead of what the colossal circulations of the early 1950s brought in, also adjusted for inflation. That second part about the price increase is crucial because the industry, at least the American side of it, isn't necessarily selling more books. From the article, quote, The increased dollars in the comic format and in comic stores were generated by fewer releases than in pre-pandemic years. The comic shop market and the comic book format rebounded strongly, beating pre-pandemic unit and dollar sales numbers even with new release sites that had not yet returned to 2019 sizes, Miller said. Information like this is one of the reasons it's important to read all the data before running off to claim victory or defeat. In previous years, there wasn't nearly as much point of sales tracking, meaning the numbers were based on the orders retailers made through distributors, not by the actual number of books sold in stores. This has since changed. Quote, Analysis now uses data based on sales tracked at point of sale by the Comic Hub system at over 100 stores. They have used that data to build a model of sales for the entire comic store channel, using comparisons developed during periods in which Comic Hub and Diamond reporting overlapped. We also continued refinements in how we use the NPD book scan data. NPD book scan collects weekly point of sales data on print books from over 16,000 locations, including e-retailers, chains, mass merchandisers, independent bookstores, and more. NPD book scan covers approximately 85% of the overall U.S. trade print book market. In short, what we're seeing now is closer to what actually happens in the market. At first glance, it looks great. $2 billion in sales is nothing to laugh at. However, where that money's going is. According to a report from ICV2, quote, Manga is now the largest graphic novel type in North America, larger than sales of kids, superhero, or author graphic novels, according to an ICV analysis of the 2021 graphic novel sales across channels. Manga now makes up roughly 43% of the graphic novel business across the book and comic store channels. After an explosion of anime streaming fueled growth in 2020, sales of manga more than doubled in 2021, growing 134%, up 137% in the book channel, and an even 100% in bookstores. Now, you might ask, where do the American books fit into this? Well, according to the report, kids' books, Captain Underpants in the sort, made up the second largest group at 27% of sales, growing at 37% in 2021. As for the superhero books, you know, the books everyone thinks of when you say comic books, well, quote, superhero graphic novels, which include titles published by Marvel and DC, along with any other titles based on corporate-owned content, such as titles tied to movies, TV, and character licenses, remain the third largest category of graphic novels, making up 16% of total sales. But it was the slowest growing category in 2021, up 25%, behind 29% growth in the book channel, and 21% growth in the comic store channel. Ain't that a shame? If only someone, anyone, had been saying this was the case for nigh on a decade. Oh, but it gets worse because comic creator-owned books are just slightly behind the mainstream comics. Quote, 
author titles, which include content owned by and associated with its creators, are now only narrowly behind superhero titles, with a 15% share of the business. The category was the second fastest growing, with 45% growth overall in 2021, from 55% growth in the book channel, and 28% growth in comic stores. In short, mainstream American comics are barely ahead of creator-owned books. Manga is outselling American traits at nearly 3 to 1, and nearly double the sales compared to single-issue comics. That's just embarrassing. I can't think of another American industry getting decimated like this on our own turf. It's even worse when you consider that superheroes have never been more popular. The Marvel and DC films have made tens of billions of dollars, their games have made hundreds of millions of dollars, and yet they can barely sell the comics. How do you even begin to explain that? What is going on with American comic books that makes it so hard for them to compete with manga? I know people are tempted to blame politics, but that's only part of the problem, because this was already an issue before progressives took over the industry. This goes back to a very basic problem within the industry. They lost the youth market. Or really, they gave it up. I was there. I was there two decades ago when Marvel caught a case of the fuckets and just published whatever they wanted, and when DC Comics dove headfirst into nostalgia and started retconning Silver Age stories, undoing events like Crisis on Infinite Earths, and getting rid of all the 90s characters older millennials like me grew up reading. They ran us away, right as manga like Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, Full Metal Alchemist, Gintama, Battle Royale, Soul Eater, Reborn, and Death Note hit. All the drama, the action, the character development, the storytelling, the dramatic art that was being erased from the big two was right there in manga, and it had the added benefit of actually having an end to the story. Making matters worse, the early 2000s saw a second resurgence of anime, which my generation enjoyed as teens and college kids, but it had a much greater impact on younger millennials and the older Zoomers who grew up with these shows. When, or really if, they turned to comics, they didn't seek out superhero books. They went for manga and the American comic book industry was happy to oblige. There was little desire at the big two to make books for a younger audience, or at least to include the themes and concepts that seemed to make manga so popular to people under 40. Instead, both Marvel and DC quadrupled down on their previous plans, and the indie scene became all about failed movie pitches turned into comics. The industry also shifted creatively. The artist became less important than the writer, and the writing moved from a style built around visual storytelling to little more than screenplays. Decompressed storytelling, the idea of an almost real-time version of events, took over. The single issues began to be written for the trade, so the single issues were less satisfying and, more importantly, less enticing. The obvious problem here is what happens when someone waits so long for a trade that they forget it's coming out. Far worse, however, was the tone. Everything became about deconstruction, about taking these concepts, tropes, and themes and grounding them in reality. These larger-than-life superheroes were suddenly no different than any of us, and often no better. They weren't really heroes anymore, just people with powers. The Big Two had events where their heroes fought other heroes instead of fighting villains, and many of the stories hinged on deep knowledge of nearly 80 years of backstory for any of it to make any sense. And then when they got done with deconstructing the superheroes, they started deconstructing their deconstructions, and became this infinite loop of regurgitated Watchmen wannabes. Meanwhile, series like Naruto and Bleach were hitting their peaks, and new series like Attack on Titan, Blue Exorcist, and Tokyo Ghoul were snatching up young readers who were completely uninterested in American comics. The bizarre part is that this was happening right in front of everyone's faces. It was painfully obvious that manga had an appeal to the youth market that American comics didn't. And while there were attempts to make manga-style or really anime-style American comics, most American publishers, especially Marvel and DC, just let the market go so they could play to boomers and Gen Xers who bought their books. It never seemed to cross anyone's mind to not just try to copy the art style of manga, but also the storytelling and themes found in those popular series. There's a reason why books like Naruto, Attack on Titan, The Promised Neverland, and Demon Slayer were so successful, and it's the way the stories were told, and the concepts they focused on. There was no American answer to something like Naruto, which focused on rivalry, friendship, brotherhood, revenge, forgiveness, loneliness, and otherness. Those themes are found all over the most popular manga series. The same themes, but different stories, different takes, different characters, resulting in dozens of well-told stories that could appeal to nearly anyone. Meanwhile, American creators rolled around in nostalgia and trying to prove that comics could be serious literature, and by the end of it, they'd essentially run off anyone born after 1994. Then the progressives came in, bitching about this, that, and the other, and at first they got no traction, but as they got hired by the publishers, 
their political messaging made its way into the already suffering books. Now, this wouldn't have been a huge problem if the stories were at least good, but they weren't. Much like the deconstructed stories, the far left stories were the same, tackling the same set of issues, this time race, sex, sexuality, and politics, from the same perspective over and over and over. It was made worse by many writers and artists being first-timers, having never written, drawn, and often never read any comics. With comic books already a niche market, these creators sought to target a niche group of progressive-leaning readers, driving away readers who'd grown tired of the nostalgia bait but bought comics out of habit. And while this was happening, manga like My Hero Academia, One Punch Man, and Demon Slayer dominated. The first two are particularly painful because they're a Japanese take on the superhero genre, and they're arguably better versions of superheroes than we have in American comics. This is the current state of the American comic book industry. Superheroes, their biggest genre, getting trounced by manga at the height of superheroes' popularity. Half the top grossing movies are superhero films. There are dozens of superhero TV shows. Games based on superheroes frequently top the charts. And yet, basically no one buys comics. And then the industry has the audacity to try to take credit for this $2 billion profit as if it's their books that are selling well. No, you don't get to do that. Yes, the industry is making money, and anyone denying it isn't looking at the numbers. But what the industry isn't doing is selling more books. By ICV2's own reports, the comic book industry moved fewer units in 2021 compared to previous years. It's not enough to raise prices on the books to make a profit. You actually have to sell more books. And you do that by telling stories that people want to read, not rehashing the same deconstructions or political hot takes every couple of months. It also wouldn't hurt that when you have a title that might appear to a younger or broader audience, like Strange Academy, that you promote the damn book. That way people will know it's out. You can't just assume people are going to stumble onto these comics because barely anyone reads American comics. The American comic book industry has got to up their game when it comes to creators, stories, and marketing. And if they can't, just license the characters to the Japanese, because you know they'll probably do it better anyway. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.